Everybody, you know, you guys know I really missed you. So, but um, look, we're we're really excited about the players that we were able to attract here in this recruiting class. I know this was a little bit different in terms of having an early signing date and then finishing up today, but um, we were pleased with the guys that we were able to attract. Uh, I think in every recruiting class, uh, there's always a uh, guy that you get that you thought you might not get, and there's also a guy that you thought you might get that you didn't get. And um, but but overall, uh, I think we solved a lot of needs in this class uh, in terms of, and I think we had to recruit uh, by need, especially we had to have a punter. All right, we need to get some defensive backs because we've never lost this many guys at one position at one time. Uh, and I think we did a great job in that area. But uh, there's a lot of hard work that goes into this uh, recruiting by a lot of people. Uh, and we certainly appreciate the team that we have here at Alabama and the great effort that um, they all put in to try to make this uh, um, class one that can really complement the players that we have now and you know, add to the future success of our team. Um, that team starts with our assistant coaches who do a great job of identifying players, establishing relationships with players, putting a lot of time and energy into um, bringing it to fruition where we have an opportunity to uh, sign a guy and get him to commit to coming uh, to Alabama. But the team that we have here, starting with our president, uh, Dr. Bell, our athletic director, Greg Byrne, um, the university community, uh, the professors, the academic staff who spend a lot of time each weekend in helping us recruit, uh, answer a lot of questions about academic circumstances for families is uh, certainly appreciated. John Deaver does a great job on his side of the fence and all the support staff that we have here, whether it's the medical staff, the strength and conditioning coaches, Miss Amy and nutrition, uh, all these people do a fabulous job of uh, answering questions and helping develop relationships with people to make them comfortable because one thing that we do have here is a really strong family of people who work together, uh, who stay together uh, to help our players have a better chance to be successful. So um, we, we you know, certainly appreciate the atmosphere that our fans create uh, when players visit here for games. Uh, I think the energy, the enthusiasm, the tradition are all things that um, really help us um, be able to continue to uh, attract character quality people who want to get an education, who want to be good people, who uh, want to be the very best that they can as football players. Um, so, you know, as I alluded to before, when you sort of, sometimes it matches up in terms of how you get ranked and rated and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but you have to try to solve some of the needs that you have on your team. Uh, I think we were able to do that, you know, in, in this particular class. So, um, you know, I, I, I think especially at DB where we were able to, you know, Patrick Sertain is, you know, probably the, at least he's ranked, you know, as one of the top guys in the country at his position. Um, you know, Savion Smith is a top junior college guy at his position. Um, we got three other guys, the top DB in the state, and Jalen Armour Davis. Um, so, you know, we felt really, really good about the five guys that we were able to attract at that position, and um, it, it, those guys are going to have a great opportunity to, to, you know, compete on our team. But as I say every year, um, you know, you, you can't look at a puppy dog and look at his feet and know how big he's going to get someday. So um, the real evaluation of any recruiting class, and I've said this when we had number one classes, and I'm saying it now, that uh, is really down the road in two or three years how many of these guys really turn out to be really, really good players. And um, I think that from a coaching standpoint, that's what we want to try to do with every player. Uh, try to help them uh, develop as players so that they have a chance to be successful here uh, in their career, and we're going to continue to do that with the players that we're able to recruit today. Um, so I really thank everybody uh, out there that their hard work and energy uh, goes into this each and every year. Uh, this recruiting has turned into pretty much a year-round process, uh, and it's not just about recruiting this class, but it's next year's class and a class after that. Um, so. Um, the recruiting calendar has changed how we recruit, uh, but the energy that a lot of folks put into this is certainly appreciated, and I'd like to thank everyone for that. Okay. Coach, we'll start in the back with Cecil. 
Um, Coach, you, you mentioned um, in your remarks about relationships, and you, you, you did have, a, a, I suppose, a relatively large amount of staff turnover late in the process. Uh, did that affect you at all with, with certain prospects? And, and um, how, did, how did you feel about that as you were out? Well, I don't, I don't think there's any question about the fact that there may be some prospects out there that were rec being recruited by somebody who left. Uh, and maybe that was a little bit of an issue with them, but I do think that the coaches that we hired uh, certainly did a great job of going out there and trying to develop relationships with um, you know, the players that we were recruiting. So in some cases, maybe it had an effect, uh, but in other cases, I don't think it did. Um, so I can't really answer that emphatically to, to tell you uh, whether it did or didn't. But uh, I think in, in recruiting, especially when you start recruiting guys, um, you know, two years in advance, that when they feel comfortable and develop relationships with people, it certainly uh, can have some effect on, you know, how comfortable they feel with the other folks. Let's go here in the middle with Michael. Just wondering how many guys did you expect to sign today, and what did you guys learn about the uh, the early recruiting cycle and how it impacts the way the whole flow of things? Well, I think every year is going to be different with the recruiting cycle. I think this year was probably a little different because there were so many coaching changes. Um, so those coaching changes were much more aggressive in the late signing period because they got their staffs together and uh, in some cases created new opportunities for players that um, – but, you know, maybe next year it won't be that way. So you could say, well, if you'd have signed more guys early, it would have been better this year, but maybe next year it wouldn't be. Um, but I, I do think that um, it does accelerate the recruiting calendar. I think you have to have more guys visit early. Uh, you got to get on top of people early. Um, if they're going to early sign, you got to identify that and recruit to that timetable. And the guys that are going to you know, stay uh, until the end. Uh, you certainly have to be uh, very conscious of um, doing a good job with those guys as well. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that we've all kind of grown to understand that, you know, commitments don't really mean a whole bunch in a lot of cases. Uh, so I don't think you can judge things based on that uh, because guys just continue to visit so they're really not committed and then when they find something else that they like better then they're not committed so um, we, 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 we don't put a lot of pressure on guys to commit um, and we continue to recruit guys whether they are or they aren't and I think a lot of other people try to manage it the same way. Right side here with Chandler. I'm wondering what specifically you see in Patrick Sertain Jr. that's got you excited, and obviously he has a, a lineage with his father. Do you see maybe some of the shades of him on that field as well? Well, his dad was a great player and um, was actually on the Dolphin team when I took the job there and uh, was a free agent and went off, but you know was a great player for many, many years. And um, Patrick's a little, little longer type guy, um, kind of guy we like here and. Um, very instinctive player. Uh, he's got good long speed, uses his length well. He's got good ball skills, good ball judgment, uh, can play man-to-man. -man. Not afraid to get up and, and press people. That's, that's a good style for him, and that's our style here. So um, we're excited about having him in the program and really looking forward to working with him. Ryan? You guys had 16 early enrollees last year, I think four this year. What are some of the factors that maybe contributed to the Warriors? Well, we, we had five this year, so, um, but 16 was probably a little bit of an anomaly. You know, most of the time we've had between seven and nine has been pretty average for, you know, mid-year enrollees. But I don't think we, we don't make a judgment or a decision on a player based on whether he's a mid-year enrollee or not. So you recruit the guys that you feel meet the criteria for what you want at positions. Sometimes those guys are mid-year guys and sometimes they're not. You know, last year there were a lot of guys that we were recruiting that were. Uh, this year, not as many. Um, you know, a guy's got to have all the academic qualifications when he's a mid-year guy. And there are some schools out there that won't even allow guys to graduate at mid-year. 
All right, so this is not something that we say, okay, because this guy's a mid-year guy, we want to recruit him so we can get more mid-year guys. That's not something we really do. So it's a circumstance that we don't really totally control. Uh, we don't really try to talk guys into being mid-year guys. Uh, there are advantages if, if they want to do it in terms of their college development uh, because they're going to be here in a time where they have more time to adjust socially, academically, as well as uh, to learn what to do in, uh, from a football standpoint because they can go through spring practice and off-season program and all that. So um, I, I don't know how to answer that question because it's not a part of the evaluation process. Just wondering what your, what your thoughts are on some of the defensive linemen you were able to get and how does that sort of address your needs on the team? Well, we were, we were actually hoping to maybe get one more defensive lineman in this class. We feel really good about the two guys that we got. Uh, Stephon Wynn is a really good player, big power guy. You know, Barrymore is, you know, the same, you know, kind of guy. I think some of the outside backer type guys that we've recruited here in the past have become defensive linemen. Uh, so the fact that we got some really good guys that outside backer that have really good size and really good size potential uh, may grow into something else, you know, in their career here, but um, that's something that remains to be seen. But we feel really good about those two guys. Again, we, we, we'd probably, if, you know, we had our druthers, we'd have got one more guy uh, at that position. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to uh, maybe look and evaluate and see if there's somebody out there that uh, would help us. On the left side with Tony. Coach, I, I've got two. If, if you're able to comment on Jalen Watt, Waddell, uh, I'd like your thoughts on him. Yeah, okay. Well, the only reason I looked at him was we can't comment until we get the paperwork, and it was a, I guess we have. Literally 10 seconds before you ask. Okay. You got good timing. Well, Jalen is an outstanding, outstanding young man. I mean, really a good person. Um, you know, we had him in camp last summer. We've recruited him for a long time. He's got great quickness, I, uh, change of direction, run after catch. Uh, really a, an outstanding overall receiver, but would work really well for us in the slot. Um, has really good run after catch, speed sweep type of ability. So may be a little bit different than some of the guys that we have right now, which is a really good thing. I think receivers are a little bit like a basketball team. You know, you got a point guard, you got a shooting guard, you got a power forward. I mean, all those different kind of guys really make a good receiving core. So uh, we're excited about him because great quickness, great change of direction, really, really hard to cover. Um, so, uh, and a great person. Secondly, uh, this is the first year, I think, in 13 years that Alabama hasn't signed a quarterback. Just what, what, what went into that decision uh, to not sign a quarterback? This well, I, I think that um, we'll, we'll probably have a quarterback join us some kind of way between now and then, which I don't think I can comment about. But um, look, when you have really good young players at a position, sometimes it's hard to attract uh, uh, another guy at that particular position. So. Uh, I think you all know our circumstance at quarterback right now with the players that we have here and what grade they're in and um, how much more eligibility they have. So rather than, you know, reach for somebody, um, we, we, we would rather try to solve the issue uh, maybe a different way with maybe a more experienced guy down the road. and. Um, you know, certainly think that next year we might be in a position to get a really good player uh, at that position who uh, could be someone who could impact us in the future. We've got two more. Alex, then we'll finish up the season. You spoke about needs and, and addressing a lot of them. Obviously, defensive backs you did well in. You mentioned wanting another defensive line. What were some positions that you maybe struck out at that you weren't certain you thought maybe you'd get better at than you did? Uh, I really don't think we struck out anywhere, to be honest with you. Um, you know, nothing comes out perfect because we don't control all these things. But, um, you know, we'd have liked to get two inside linebackers. We got one. Um, so does that mean we struck out? No. Um, 
you know, we'd have, we'd have taken another defensive lineman. We could have taken another offensive lineman. Uh, we got the right number of DBs. We got a punter. Um, you know, we redshirted a kicker from last year's class, what really counts in this year's class, so we couldn't really take a, a full class this year uh, from a number standpoint. So um, I, I don't really, in a perfect world, if we could say we could recruit a perfect amount of players at every position, I think I've already mentioned the, the, the positions where if we could have got another guy, it would have sort of been our goal let's say starting out, because every year we kind of put up how many guys we want to recruit at each position because we do have numbers issues that we have to deal with. So sometimes you can't really get those players because um, you have to, like we had to get a lot of DBs. We lost six guys. I mean, so five was the, was the number and we felt really good about the guys we got at that position. Uh, we got Lots of guys at outside backer. The emphasis was to try to get defensive players. I think we got some good defensive players. So I don't think we struck out anywhere. Finish up in the back of the season. Um, Coach, just to, to wrap up, obviously you've been doing this in the Southeastern Conference, uh, I guess it's certainly as a head coach, longer than anybody. Is it is it equally tough as it was 15 years ago? Is it much tougher out there? Was this year... Um, particularly competitive with all the new coaches? Well, I, I think it is very, very competitive. I think um, what's the most competitive thing we do around here is play a game. The next most competitive thing we do around here is recruit players. Uh, and that's the way it is. So, um, and, you know, we won a lot of battles in this recruiting. Um, I think you know continuity helps you win battles in recruiting. Relationships help you win battles in recruiting. Um, guys seeing that they have an opportunity to contribute to your team. Um, in some cases, maybe looking too much at where they can play early rather than where they can develop um, to be the best players. But um, I think all these things sort of contribute to um, so to say it's any easier to recruit now than it used to be, I, I can't really say that. Uh, I think when you have success and when you have continued success like we've had, uh, you become the target um, sometimes, which I think makes it a little more difficult. Um, you know, people convince players that we have all these players and they can't play here. and. Uh, I always use the example that we've had some really, really good left tackles here, all of them first or second round draft picks for the 11 years that we've been here. Uh, and there's only one year that that player at left tackle did not start and play. And that's Cyrus Quanjo's freshman year. Every other left tackle we, we've had has started as a freshman. All right, but if you get out there in recruiting, they act like we got 10 Cam Robinsons here. All right, we only had one. All right, and he played every down that he was here that he was healthy. Uh, and so did every other left tackle. So uh, I think, you know, sometimes quality is misconstrued with quantity. Uh, and but every player that we have here was told at some point in time in recruiting that they probably couldn't play here and they could play faster someplace else. But we attract the guys that are good competitors, uh, that want to see if they can meet the standard of playing here with uh, a lot of expectation and a great tradition, uh, having a chance to play in big games. Um, and at the end of the day, we're probably better off you know, with those kind of competitors. And uh, that's worked out really well for us. Coach, that's all we got. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.